I think we have to understand that patients' experiences is important. And you don't know what their level of pain, if they say they're miserable and they're keeled over and they're passing out, that is not normal, first of all. What would you recommend for, say there is a girl listening, say she is 20, 21, she's mm -hmm. either not really dated or really only kissed. If she has dated, there's been no chance of STD. There, um, what would you recommend for her? Like what should her plan be as she's, preparing like say she's say she's like early 20s she's getting engaged she's going to be married in the next couple of years but she hasn't been sexually active what should her relationship with her uh, gynecologist be um i you know i think she could go and meet to meet the doctor and discuss whether or not a pap is indicated if there are no issues no risks she could probably hold off until she's actually sexually active and i think they can come up with that agreement. Now, do you have to go 21, 22? Probably not. I mean, if she's doing well, periods are normal, no pain, no abnormal symptoms, et cetera. Does she even need to go to the GYN at that point? I don't necessarily think they have to. I mean, I think if they're mid twenties, try to meet them then, you know, because once you start having, once you start like, if you're getting married and gonna be sexually active, that's the reason to get your pap smear. So okay. um, she could even see her primary care doctor. Some patients will kind of transition from a pediatrician to someone like me, who is family medicine, then to an OBGYN when necessary. So some patients should have a primary care doctor. And a lot of times they can guide them to, hey, when should I go to the OBGYN? That makes sense. So, yeah. um, you know, I've had late, 20, late 20s. I try to still do a pap. You know, I think that I worry about, I think later on, you, you, there's still like little inkling of risk, you know, for like a 1% patient who, you know, you just never know. And you don't want to yeah. just not do it ever. And I talk to them like mid twenties, someone who is a virgin, like, okay, this is what we can do. You know, use a teeny speculum, a lot of lubricant, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, I always try to follow the guidelines with individuality, if that makes sense. So, but yeah, yeah so then, she, so that's my recommendation for that patient. <laughs> yeah. And then what if she does have pain? Like I, like for mm. me, when, as soon as I started getting my periods, they were extreme. I don't think I realized they were extreme, but I got very sick and mm. um, like keeled over, you know, curled up in a ball, mm. having to have a heating pad on, um, very heavy, heavy periods, um, sporadic, not very like in sync the way they ought to be. Um, and it wasn't actually until I dated someone whose mom um, did, um, was a Creighton Napro technician. So they did cervical mucus, like she helps women chat uh, chart their cervical mucus and then mm -hmm. through looking at that she's able to let them know where their cycles are and what and if they're at risk for things like she's she's told I think she's had at least five girls that she noticed they had cervical cancer prior to their doctor noticing um, and then others like me where it's been endometriosis and she's like I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. the way your cervical mucus is like you have endometriosis let's talk about these symptoms mm -hmm. here's a doctor so she got me to a doctor but prior to that I feel like I talked to doctors about it I talked to mm -hmm. my um, gynecologist about it and it was like okay well you're on the pill and you need to take more Midol or Tylenol or you know and some people just don't have high pain tolerances which really upset yeah. me because I feel like that's, I do have a high pain tolerance. I feel like that's gaslighting in a way. Right? I feel like um, I feel like some the things that I hear patients say it's upsetting because I think number one, even if you think that you don't say that, and and I think we have to understand that patients' experiences is important and you don't know what their level of pain if they say they're miserable and they're keeled over and they're passing out that is not normal first of all and any kind of pain with your periods that affects your ability to go to school go to work mm -hmm. be social if you're avoiding events because of your period i mean granted like sometimes you just don't feel good and you don't want to go but if it's like my pain is a 10 out of 10 i can't even function I'm, I'm vomiting i'm having all these other symptoms that is an normal. And even if you're on the pill, I would say your pill's not working and there's something else going on, or, you know, I would try something else and do a further workup. You know, I think that, 
the longer you live with pain like that, the worse you, the more you can, a higher percentage you can develop other problems later on. So pain begets pain, meaning even painful periods can develop into other kinds of pain that can be, can worsen your problem too. So that's something that I see as well. So definitely one is, is this endometriosis or not? I think that's, it needs to be proven. Two is pain that's affecting your quality of life is not normal. Mm -hmm.